What's up, Young Trench? We are back. We're back. It hasn't been so long this time. It's only been a couple days since we filmed last. It's been a couple days, man. So I'm kind of proud of that. Oh, this is episode 30. Episode 30? Episode 30. No That's way. a big milestone. It's Friday, November 10th, 2.45 in the afternoon. What the hell have you been up to for the past couple days? Uh, I mean, still working. Just always working on Just music. always working. <laughs> yes. Dude, this guy does not sleep, bro. Yeah, and you're getting back into basketball right now a little bit. A little bit. Because I know you've We've been talking. We've the past two days. Yeah, you were talking from, uh, forever. You just kept saying, like, I just want to hoop. I just want to hoop. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like it's... I come home for a couple days, mm -hmm. you know, from a trip. This is like the last eight weeks. Yeah. Come home from a trip, hang out for like one or two days, then we're on to the next city or next place. Yeah. And it was like, dude, I haven't hooped in like two months. Like for real. Like yeah, no. I haven't ran fives or, you know, whatever. So um Is it fun? Like does it just feel good to be back out there? Feels good to be back out there hooping. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It feels great. You dropped 40 and was that your first men's league? I don't back? know 40. More than 30. More than 30? I don't know the exact number. Um, But yeah, that was last night. Bro, I, I was thinking, bro, the game was at 9.40 p.m. on a Thursday night. Really? Yeah, and that I was seems thinking, weird. I'm like, damn, this shit is late as yeah, hell. That is really late, especially because like... Everyone has work in the morning. I like it's probably just like normal, normal yeah, dudes hooping, right? Yeah, it was just a bunch of random. You know, there might have been a couple football players. Yeah. you know, older guys, younger guys, just people trying to hoop. Um, but yeah, it felt good to be back. Good. Talk to me about uh, what's next? Like, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't like, even know. Do you have any trips planned? Oh man, I, I feel like it's very rare. We're definitely if you say gonna you don't. be so. Dude, I mean, I think we're home for like a week or two now, maybe a okay. couple weeks. And then late November, early December, we're back on the road. Mm -hmm. um, we got Vegas early December. Oh, yeah, for your birthday and the in-season tournament. Well, we're going to be out there on my birthday, but technically we're not going there for my yeah. birthday. We're going out there for, we got the tournament Yep. in Vegas. Um, we also have some buckets over bullying events going on. Okay. For the charity, uh, so that'll be that'll be lit. And it just so happens to be that we're out there for my birthday. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know what we're about to do. We might have to go out or do something. Yeah, we gotta. We gotta bring the podcast out there. Yeah, we can do that for sure. It was very fun last time we did it. I don't. Yeah. I don't remember. Um. We had Kinfolk John. Kinfolk John we yeah. had on in Vegas. We could definitely do something like, we, oh, we got to have, oh, dude, should we, is Shooter Birdie going to be there? Yeah. I was going to say, should we have like him and his girlfriend on, on again, like same time in Vegas? Dude, we should. We should. How many mics do we even have? I don't even. We have four, right? Yeah, we have four mics. We've just never used all four. Four mics. That'd be kind of crazy if we like get in like the hotel or something, just have like a, a big I don't know. We'll call it the birthday podcast or something. Yeah. No, I don't know. I think, I think it's just beneficial because, like, bro, you never know who's gonna be in Vegas. Yeah. Who we run a run across well, in the casino, especially like, during the yo, tournament. Let's go chop it up on the podcast. Yeah. During the tournament, it's going to be crazy because, like, it was already crazy during. Uh, what was the last thing we were there for? Whoa. What was that when like we? S I remember seeing I've Josh Kitty like s giddy like seventy. T oh, NBA con. Yep. Yep. That's what it was. And like, dude, there was everyone there for NBA con. So I can't imagine what it's like for the in season. Yeah. Tournament. What was what was that? Was that during summer league? Was, yeah, that was summer league too. That's wow, right. That was a crazy time. There was a lot going on in <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> there was, a dude. All I remember about being there was just like chilling in the hotel. And I swear, just specifically seeing Josh Giddy so many times, I was just like, "How do I where, keep?" Where are we at? Resorts World. Yeah, we were at Resorts World. Yeah. No, wait, we're. Yeah, yeah, we were, and I just remember seeing him so many times there. And then, uh, what you call it? I remember there was this one time where I got in the elevator, and like everyone besides the stars 
I was just in the elevator. It was just me and like the whole Bucks team. <laughs> and I was just like, what is happening? This yeah, is so bro. Weird. I mean, that's, bro, that's <laughs> how it is. I feel like for Summer League in Vegas, yeah. bro, everybody's out there. All the teams are out there. You know, you even got people that aren't playing on the Summer League that are just NBA, you oh, yeah. know, M- older NBA guys that yeah, are there like just I seen, supporting, uh, bro. I seen, so. I seen Karan. When I was there, dude, oh my god, it was so cool. Was dude, we got to get Karan on the podcast. I know, we've been talking about that. We, we were close to having him yeah. in Miami. We just, the schedules didn't work out. Yeah, I know. I remember um, I wanted to talk to him because I saw him, but I saw he was on the phone. And like the one time I'm never going to interrupt someone is when they're on the phone. I, yeah, or if they're, they're doing something. If, on the, if they're someone, on the phone. Yeah. Or if they're eating are, like, two times where I'm not going to walk up to someone. 100%. Those are, like, the two times where it's, like, you you don't want to be interrupted. I already know that. Yeah. Because I don't want someone walking up to me while I'm on the phone. Because, like, it's kind of weird because the person on the phone can't tell that I'm trying to talk to someone. Hold on. Yeah, like, they can't tell. So, it's just, like, hold on. And it's just so awkward. So, like, I try never to do that. Yeah. Hell, yeah. You want to slide me in a... Electrolid, thanks, oh, man. W. Cheers. Good promo. Have you ever had like a, I, f- a weird, I feel like you've never talked to me about this before. But have you ever had any like really weird fan encounters, or is it just like kids that are overwhelmed? Any weird fan encounters? Yeah, like you know, like some t- like let's say, ah, let's say if you like were Justin Bieber, I bet he would say someone, like. Came up to him and like made him out of like popcorn kernels or some crazy th- random thing like that. Uh, hmm. I don't know, bro. I feel like for the most part, your fans are always just pretty cool. I feel like has has there been anything recently, Ron? I really do feel like for the most there part, might have been something recently that I can't think of. What really? was it? Abu Dhabi. There was a weird experience in Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi? I'm very curious what this is. I'm not, I'm trying to remember what it is. <laughs> what are you talking about? No. No, no, fan experience. No, fan experience. Yeah. I'm trying to think. So no one's ever has anyone ever like Oh, I have a good question. I'm trying to think of like has anyone ever followed us or Probably, but, like, I honestly... I mean, I don't have any, like, really weird fan encounters. Like, you know, maybe a DoorDash driver will be like, yo, do you mind if I get a pic? Yeah. I'm like, hell yeah, let's yeah, get it. You yeah, know, no, like, I'm, I don't I don't, I don't, don't really care about I've that I've been here shit. when that happens. I have I had, uh, this year at Trick or Treating, there was this kid that came to my house last year, and then, uh, he made sure to come back to my... It was the only kid that came to my house for trick-or-treating like only yeah it was so dead this year it was unbelievable like i don't know if you there guys was one kid that did you guys up. hand out candy this year or were you i was i was out of town during okay so uh trick-or-treating i don't know if you know about this but like there's this new thing if you, have you heard of it called trunk or treat trunk or treat yeah no uh, okay uh this is interesting uh so there's this new thing called trunk or treat now where kids don't go trick-or-treating anymore because parents think it's unsafe. So what they do is it's like a bunch of parents just park in like a school parking lot and they uh, decorate their trunks and every kid just goes from trunk to trunk and just gets candy in like the school parking lot. So they don't. Bro. So no one walks. You know how we used to be walking miles and miles they just walk from car to car, like spot to spot. Honestly, that's sad. Bro. It is sad. I that is so sad. I just think because, like, when you know, I'm 23 years old. Yep. You want to take your kid trick or treating, right? But like, what? Ten years ago, right? When we were trick or treating, yeah. bro, the whole neighborhood was out. Everyone. There, I've never seen that many people outside at Everyone. one time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Every kid in their families were walking around mm-hmm. with, you know, strollers yep. or, you know, the thing we had. What's the thing? And the wheelbarrow. And you're walking around and you're like running into like your friends that you like barely see. You're just like, oh, dang, there's yeah. that guy. Or you're with all your homies and stuff. And now yeah, it's bro. like, bro, it's 
I understand that like the world may seem unsafe, but I'm I'm a firm believer that the reason it feels like so much more is happening is because we have social media, so we see everything, and mm-hmm. we didn't used to. Like, if things yeah. were happening, we had no idea because you had to watch the news or you would never know. Now I can go on Twitter and see, like, everything that's happening. So I'm, we're just more aware of the problems in the world. Yeah. Like, that's really what it is. And I'm, to me, I'm like, yo, I have a nephew now, and I would be very genuinely upset if trick-or-treating is not a thing anymore by the time he's, like, six. Bro, like, that would suck. And I've been hearing a lot about this trunk or treat thing where, like, kids just aren't doing it anymore. Like, I literally had one kid show up to my house this year. I can't believe that, bro. It, it was unbelievable. There was tons of clips on. We got to get the kids back out, man. Because th- that those are, I mean, those are memories that you don't forget with your, with your homies growing up, bro. Dude, you know? Like, yeah. That's. I literally, <laughs> I've emailed um the kenosha mayor i've never spoken to him in my you life you emailed him? i was so upset that no one came and i was like maybe it's also because it was snowing and i emailed our mayor and i was like hey these were some of the best memories that we've ever had is like a child wait you dead ass sent the email to see. the mayor i'll see if i can find it find this email because i literally emailed our mayor bro so, you are hilarious I was so bro. genuinely upset what made you think of yo i'm gonna email the mayor of our city <laughs> All right, what said, made you think of doing that because bro there was no kids out it was freezing i knew it was like the next day was gonna be pretty nice it was gonna be like 60 degrees bro, that and is... it was snowing on a halloween and i was like yeah. okay they could have changed the date maybe if maybe the problem was cold weather they've changed it before where they've been like oh we'll postpone it so I de- I uh I emailed him and I said, "Hello sir. <laughs> As you're aware, it's very cold out today and the children are supposed to be trick or treating. Knowing that this weekend will be much higher in the 50s for the temperature, can we have it rescheduled so the kids can have an actual good time doing something that we were all able to do as children?" I was so upset. <laughs> Bro, you know that's that's saying. you're the real MVP for that email. <laughs> was, but like, how the hell did you, Bro? Email the mayor, bro. Yeah, that was. I never heard one. of no one emailing the mayor before. I know. That I was so upset. Like I literally, <laughs> like I was so in my head about that. I was just like, dog. If I was, if I was like eight years old right now, I'd be so sad that I wasn't yeah. like with the homies trick or treating. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Nah, we were you at my crib not this year, but the last year, we did the basketball thing. Mm-mm. That was fun, bro. I bet that looked fun. I feel like there's probably a lot of kids in this neighborhood. Yeah, there actually is. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I feel like hundred percent because you live in like a, <clears throat> a very good neighborhood. I would say like. Yeah. No, I love I love this neighborhood, bro. Yeah. Yeah. No, Everyone's I, very nice. Good. Yeah, no, I'm happy to hear that. All my neighbors are like doctors and surgeons. I know that's what I'm. Like, that's what I'm saying. They're very, like I, but they're very knowledgeable, bro. And it's like you have a conversation with one of your neighbors, you're just gonna learn something. You guys also have like a, I don't know if it's definitely not like this in my neighborhood. You guys have like a lot of hospitality. Like every time you guys are driving in this neighborhood, I think it's hilarious that everyone's like. <laughs> just waving Everyone waves nah you know what's crazy though i dude i'd be waving to people sometimes I know, I and always, no one waves back <laughs> I always i'm like damn they must have not seen me when yeah, i was waving i always think that's funny when i'm with you and i just see like i'm just like all right but we're in that kind of neighborhood. I d- dude i do that shit regardless so i'd be out you know i see someone driving a tesla i'm like hey yeah. you know yeah i think that's i don't I, th- know. I think that's like a tesla thing i always remember when you first got your tesla cuz there was way more like uncommon mm. it was always like when you saw another person with the tesla you were like that's my dog bro. <laughs> <laughs> nah bro i always remember like it just felt cool like also seeing another person with it like yeah. you know when you were a little kid and you Someone had your mom's car, so you always noticed everyone else that had the other car. Like, you always notice a car more once you get it. Like, since you got a Tesla, did you recognize so many more Teslas? Um, because I feel like you don't think. I mean, yeah, there's still like. 
I feel like you see a Tesla every like a couple times a day. Yeah, yeah, no. But you but like you used to maybe only see one a day. Oh yeah. And now you see it a couple times a day, but it's still not as much as a regular like no, engine car. Not like a not like a Honda, a Honda Civic or something. That's like the most yeah. common thing ever. Yeah, no, I mean but the way that Elon's been able to like scale it has been crazy. You better get a Cybertruck. I don't know. How much are they? I don't know. That's a great question. But I always assumed that it would be something that you would end up wanting to get. Yeah, I would. For sure. I feel like it would be it's a work truck. 100% if it's over 6,000. Yeah, it's um, definitely a work truck. I feel like that would be so fire if you had a cyber. You If you had a cyber truck, you might have the only one in the city. If To be honest, I don't really think anyone else. Don't even, they're not even out No, yet. no. I just mean like when... I'm they sure someone else has pre-ordered one or something. Maybe. But no, I, I'm pretty sure. That would be sick. They're so like... I seen this video. Um, I don't know if you saw the other day. Elon was on Rogan. And uh, Rogan said, I'm going to... I could shoot your... Uh, the Cybertruck right now with a bow. And I could, I could like put a hole in it. So they went out into the... Like their warehouse area. Pulled in the Cybertruck... And Joe Rogan is just lining up arrows at this at the Cybertruck. Literally, like, the smallest dent ever. Really? Like, insane. And he's got, like, tough bows. So, that truck must have some crazy armor Bro, on I, it. I don't know what the truck's made of. I'm actually kind of curious what Cybertrucks are made of. I'm about to look it up. But, dude, the way that it was, like... Literally sh- launching multiple arrows at this cyber truck, and it's just doing nothing to it. I'm so curious what it's made of. What it is made of? What is it? It oh, it's stainless steel. So yeah, it's pretty fucking strong. Damn, dude, that's uh, that's kind of sick. I I feel like what kind of bow did the dude have? Was Rogan? It, yeah, uh, did he have like a it, crossbow or did was he actually pulling it? No, back no, himself? no, it was a crossbow. Like it, it was very, very strong, and it just was not. Damn, bro. The I might have to get one of them trucks, bro. I, that's what I'm saying. I feel like it would be like. How much are they though? I don't even. I don't are, know. Is it a six figure truck? Ah. Uh, Why did I think it was like eighty thousand? I with think the pre-order? that's what I feel like it was too. I don't think it was like crazy. That's you know what's crazy about Teslas is the one thing I've always noticed. I think people think that they're more expensive than they are. Yeah, I mean, it depends on what version you get. Yeah, I know, but I feel but like But you people, can get a basic one for yeah, cheap, Yeah, I feel bro. like people think that they're, like, in, like, like our, my mom. I feel like my mom thought that a Tesla costed, like, the same as, like, a Ferrari. Yeah. And it's, no, like, not, really... Not as much. It's not that crazy. Like, you can definitely get a Tesla for five figures. Oh yeah, like for easily. sure, bro. You could go, you could go get a Model Three, a yeah. standard Model Three for like, a, maybe a used one for like twenty to thirty grand. That's what I'm saying. Like it's, it's really, not, it's really not that bad. Cause your first car was, did you get the Model Three? Yeah, Model Three. Um, I'm pretty sure I got the fast one though. And then you had the accident. Then we got smacked in a car accident. Yeah. Actually, literally, talk about that because I know Tesla. Like, you yeah. say that it saved your life, hundred percent, bro. I don't know if Tesla just has like the safest cars. I know they test like at a high rating or whatever yeah. in terms of whatever they do for the testing. Um, but we got hit pretty good on the driver's door side. Yeah, the door that's right next to me, bro. Mm-hmm. Boom. This thing put like, if you look at the pictures of the car, Mm -hmm. there's like, like a hole that pierced in the door, right? Kind of where my knee is at. Yeah. And like, and someone, someone like blew a light or. So we were going straight. No, sorry. We were going. (laughs) Ron, are we going towards the Recplex? Yeah, we're going towards the Recplex. Mm-hmm. 
some dude comes through the light and yeah. turns right in front of us. Okay. So as I'm coming through, I like, I was like, skirt, went yeah. that way. And he came through, didn't stop, and smacked me. Like, rocked me, bro, yeah. right there. And, bro, we walked away with, like, just like a, I got a I, scar on my yeah. arm, and that was it. It was super minor, I remember. But the car, you see the damage of the car? Mm-hmm. Like, I, if I was in a regular car and it didn't have the Tesla safety features like it has, bro, I I might not be walking right now. Yeah. Like, dead was, ass. I know. It was cra- It was crazy. It, like, I mean, right next to my knees and my legs, bro. Uh-huh. No, it was awful. Like, the spot where it hit, if you were to just look at the car, like, I don't know if... If this is like a clip or something, if Brendan's editing this, dude, if you look at the car, it would not look like the driver would be okay at all. Bro, I was perfectly fine. That's bro. what I'm saying. It was insane. And you know how they're like, well, let's let's get you an ambulance just in case. To, yeah. You know, let's get you to the hospital, get you checked out. Yeah, because you your, could just be in shock or something. Your yeah. adrenaline's going. And I was like, nah, I don't even really need one. I was just more like pissed, like, bro, this is my fucking whip. Yeah. It's my first whip, dog. Yeah. And it took a while for you to get another car yeah. after that. You were rocking the rental for a minute. I remember the first day yeah, you pulled up bro. on me. I was like, the bro just pulled up on me in the rental Chrysler. Yeah, bro. I remember that. Yeah, no, that's crazy. You got very, very lucky. That was That was scary. That was one of the scariest things. When you posted that on Instagram, I think I, I think that's like where I saw it first. I, you, I, you posted it like pretty fast, I think, or maybe Snapchat or something. Yeah, probably that night. Well, the crazy thing is, is like <laughs> traffic's getting held up and people are coming by filming this shit. Like yeah. everyone is. Oh yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, of course. Yeah. You know, like everyone's filming this shit. Mm-hmm. So then. It just was getting out on social media. Yeah, no, that was bad. That was bad. I was very scared when I first saw that. Cause yeah, bro. And then when you were like, no, nah, I'm like kind of chilling. I was like, I yeah, know. I was, bro, I promise you, I had a scratch on my arm and that was it. Yeah. And that's why I'm like, you know, when I get older and, you know, I get a little bit more successful, I want to get like multiple cars and shit. I yeah. will always have a Tesla, though. I promise you, I will always. Yeah, that'll be my day to day. My daily driver, yeah. bro. All day long. Safest that, car I've ever been in. That makes sense. I want to talk to you about um, another thing. You just had the uh, scan on your brain. Yes. So like. That's right. Can you talk to us about that? Yeah, so we had another six month um, update with the cyst on my brain. Yeah, and it went it went well. It's no signs of it being a tumor or being cancerous as of right now. Yeah, um, it is a little weird, like knowing like fuck, there's something on my brain. Mm-hmm. Like, and they don't. They think it's their, you know, 95% that it's a, that it's a cyst or whatever, but you can see like from when they first discovered it in 2019 until now, Mm -hmm. like it's doubled in size. Oh really? Yeah. It's doubled in size. I mean, we're talking like really small, but it's like the size of a penny, like on my brain right now. Yeah. So, but it's I don't know it's just weird knowing like there's something on my brain. Yeah. So have they said that it like affects anything at all? Um, not really. I talked to him about boxing too. By the oh, way. Oh yeah, yeah. What you're did not, they say about that? You're not gonna like it, man. Yeah, they said it's a bad idea. They. I mean, here's the thing, dude. My doctor is cool as hell. He yeah. knows what I do for a living. He's you know, he's got season tickets to the Bucks games. Like mm-hmm. he knows what's going on. He's cool as hell, but as I was walking out, I'm like, damn, I forgot to ask him about boxing. Mm-hmm. So I asked one of the ladies that works with him, and she's like, oh, I'll just text him real quick. And he texts her back, and he's like, well, does he mean, like, just to work out or, like, getting punched in the face? Yeah. And I was like, getting punched in the face. And she's like, well, it's not something we would recommend yeah. you to do, 
But I was thinking like if there was ever an opportunity for if so, you know, like a seven figure deal or something yeah, yeah, to yeah. get in the ring, like I would talk about it for sure. And then yeah. I'd talk with my doctor and be like, look, like you're a businessman too. Like, what should we do here? What are the, what are the pros and cons to me getting punched in the yeah? Face, I mean, you know, if you really think about it, though, technically, no doctor, even if you didn't have that, would recommend boxing. Yeah, no, for <laughs> sure. But they just they can't tell me for sure. Yeah, that if I get punched, you know, in if, the area, if something could <clears> happen. They can't tell me that something isn't gonna happen yeah, when yeah. it could. definitely could. Yeah. So that's where you got to like kind of weigh it out. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, I feel like if you have health issues Mm -hmm. with your brain or your heart, like those are the two scariest things, bro. That is scary. And shit, I've already had my heart problems when I was a kid. And Mm -hmm. now it's like, dude, we're worrying about my brain now. Yeah. But pretty much what it is, though, just to like explain, you know, what my what's going wrong, what's going on with my brain is there's like a white dot okay uh that they found in 2019 and now it's doubled in size like i said and uh it's white which means it's like spinal fluid okay and the reason why he doesn't think it's a tumor or if it's causing any issues is because there's no swelling around it yeah like they could tell based on they inject me with a dye mm-hmm. so when they do the mri it's like a clearer picture of you know everything yeah so they would they would see um like if it was swelling part of my brain but it's not yeah so one thing that the doctor thinks that it could be and i'm just praying that this is what it is because then I wouldn't have to worry about it as much because Doc's like, you know, if this thing keeps getting bigger, we might have to go in there and Mm -hmm. actually like, you know, drain it or take it out or whatever. And I'm like, shit, I don't even want to think about that. Brain surgery, bro. What? That's scary. And he's like, I don't he's like, I'd prefer not to touch your brain at all. Yeah, of course. You know, so I'm hoping that it's just like a because everyone's brain is different. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm just hoping that it's like a pocket in my brain mm-hmm. that's just getting filled with spinal fluid. Okay. You know? Yeah. And if and that's the case, like it should be on. If that's the case, once the space is done being filled with mm-hmm. spinal fluid, then it'll just stay the same. Okay. So I just, I'm hoping that's what it is. Yeah. But there's no guarantees. Okay. I'm kind of curious. Have you seen, like, at, I don't know if you've seen any of these, but if you go on TikTok and search your name, have you seen, like, the videos about, like, the the thing on your brain? No. There's, like, a lot of people making, like, unbelievably, like, sad edits about, like, videos of you when you were, like, sitting down talking about it. Oh, really? Yeah. And then the wow, comments, I haven't even seen the comments are like, oh, my God, like, is he going to die? And I'm and I'm like, what the? F- that, no, that's not what's happening right now at all. Shit, I hope not, bro. But, this shit's scary, bro. Yeah, but there's there's like a. It was very interesting. I think I looked your name up on TikTok one day, and I kept seeing like the only videos that were coming up was you sitting on the couch in that Airbnb in L.A. It just everything, and I was just like, what is yeah. this with like no, sad that, music? So that was actually a, kind of a little bit of a scary time. And yeah, this yeah. Is like, you know, this is shit I deal with off of social media. Mm-hmm. And, like, it doesn't really affect me too much, but it... But it's still scary. It's still lingering. Yeah. Like, fuck, dude. I got something on my brain, and yeah. we don't even know what it is. Um, Wait, forgot where I, where I was going with that. Um, Dealing with it off social media. It's oh, yeah, around that time, yeah. why, it was, why they were probably making them sad is because <clears throat> that time... I just had the MRI before we went to LA or whatever. Mm-hmm. And the doctor was like, "Oh shit, like it grew." Yeah, that was the And only now we're, and now we're submitting this to the tumor board, yep. which that's a board of brain surgeons that review MRIs of people's brains yeah. weekly. You know, to see they all 
add their two cents to it and say, hey, like, I think I think you should go in there and operate on it. Hey, I think you should just, you know, they all talk to, talk about these MRI pictures of people's yeah. brains and they all agree on what the best solution is. So when they told me they were submitting my pictures to the tumor board, I'm yeah, like, that's scary. what? Like, how is bro? You told me it was a cyst. What's up with the tumor board? Mm-hmm. Like, it's just called the tumor board. But yeah. But like still, you even like just hearing that it's going to so that is scary. It it was a rough time because the the doctor was like, you know, we went from doing three month MRIs every three months mm-hmm. to doing you know MRIs every six months, and then we got up to a year because mm-hmm. it wasn't like growing really. Yeah. And then I went back for my yearly checkup. Mm-hmm. And he's like, it grew. And then we had to go back to six, six month months. checkups. Yeah. And then it's like, damn, now we're going backwards. Yeah. You know, so it's it's a mental thing, but I try to, you know, not let it bother me at all. Just yeah. keep living life regularly. You know, they, they tell me at, at the hospital, if you were to take a hundred dead bodies and you scanned their brain. A lot of them would probably have something. A lot of them would have cysts on their brains that you know they would never even know about because the average human never gets their brain might not get a brand brain mri ever in their life yeah like i've never done that why the only reason that it happened was because of the seizure otherwise you never know it's kind of a blessing in disguise bro like i would have never known about this at all and and then you know the other thing that fucks me up though a little bit is like (coughs) like it's confusing because the cyst is located in a area that can cause seizures. Mm. But the doctor labeled my seizure in 2019 as, as a like sleep and, sleep yeah. deprivation yeah, or a sleep deprived seizure. Mm-hmm. And then so then but you think like, well, shit, was it really me just going hard and being sleep deprived or was and not, it this or was it this where the cyst is located yeah. i we have no clue bro yeah and we will never know until hopefully i never have a seizure again but like yeah. that's the thing that also sits on my mind and is like fuck dude mm-hmm. kind of fucks with me a little bit but i don't i don't let it i don't really let it affect me to be yeah. honest so yeah and it's been what three three years now since that yeah, Some, damn near four. Or what twenty nineteen? So, yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. So like, I I think, God willing, I think you should be good on that side. Yeah, I hope so. You man. would hope. Yeah, that I'm happy we talked about that because like, there's very very possible like if someone watches a clip from that like, when you're going through some like medical shit. Yeah, that's bro. like that's that really can fuck with someone's brain. It can it can fuck with you, bro, and it could it fucked with me for a little bit like Yeah. Oh no, when when you first had the <coughs> seizure, I remember you were like freaking out for a while about cuz like fuck, dude, what you're just like, "Ah, oh, what if it happens again?" Yeah, like what ha- I don't want it to happen when I'm driving and I yeah. got my family or all my homies in the car, mm-hmm. you know, like that that's the shit that tweaks me out. But mm-hmm. That's why I'd be popping it in the Tesla autopilot, so... Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, that's... Just that in case. Scary. But nah, man. Cr- crazy. Yeah, no, I mean, I bet a lot of people are going through shit mm-hmm. mentally from, you know, medical issues or even, you know what, anxiety. And yeah. we both went through that shit. Yeah, 100%. Like that... Dude, the, the fucking shit that, like, when it's affecting your body... Bro, there's nothing that will mess with my head more than, like, when my body feels off. Because then everything is off. Yeah, man. Like, that's why anxiety was your, just your so mind bad. Is a, your mind is a crazy yeah. thing. Like, bro, it, it's, it's crazy. I be thinking sometimes how your body works and how your mind works, how everything Dude, works is so crazy, Sometimes bro. your mind, like... <laughs> <coughs> genuinely affects your body. Like when I was going through my anxiety stuff, never in my life have I ever like passed out or fainted or anything. Yeah. But when my, I was going through my anxiety stuff, like really, really bad, I just remember like fainting one time and I never had done that Damn. before. Like literally just went, I just remember like going to the bathroom. All of a sudden I'd like 
I woke up in my bathtub. Like Bro, I, I just what? I fell backwards and I just somehow woke up in there. It was like, you didn't hit your head, did you? I no, I don't think so. I ne- my head never hurt after it. Well, so thank God. I that'd be scary. Like waking I up know. and there's blood all over yeah, the place. I, I was oh okay. My God. It was just really weird because I like I had never fainted, so I just like woke up in a place that I clearly I I wasn't going yeah. to sleep there. And I remember. Um, it was exactly like, you know, in a movie when like you hear like the high pitch ringing, like Mm -hmm. that was exactly what was happening when I woke up and I just remember like all all of a sudden I'm like trying to get out of the bathroom. I'm super like discombobulated and stuff. Just out of it. Like trying to pull myself out. (laughs) And then like my mom, I was like. Uh, like I, c- I couldn't even hear myself though. Yeah, like I was, you were just out of it. I was yelling, but I couldn't hear myself. And then I was just sweating like crazy. I couldn't like, I was crawling to my mom's steps to like try and get her to like help me. But it's so crazy because all of that came from a thing in my brain. Like it was affect my brain was affecting my body to the point where I passed out. Yeah, bro. Like, that's that's how crazy, like, some shit like anxiety can be. Yeah, bro. The mind is a powerful thing. Yeah, it's fucked up. <laughs> it was awful. It was the worst it thing. It is. Anxiety's crazy, bro. You just have to... You really have to go through it to learn how to deal with yep. it and it find your little coping mechanisms and all that shit. Cause yeah. Because I just hate to see when, like, I don't know the pharmaceutical companies just try to throw pills on people and they're Um, like, yo, take these. It's going to help you for a little bit. Yeah. You know, and then next thing you know, you're a year in and you try to get off of some of these medications. Then you start tweaking out 20 times as worse as you did. You know, I have this thing right now where like, you know, like this is like, I've always, you know, I've never slept well, but like, this is like the worst it's ever been recently. Like I've never slept so little yeah you're crazy bro my real my mom and like katie they're like yo you should like go to like a sleep doctor but i know that if i do that all they're going to do at the end of the day go take an edible bro you'll be all (laughs) All they're gonna try (laughs) and do is give me a pill like i know that they're what are they gonna do? Like talk to me? Unless about you it? go, you should go. What if you went and saw like a natural patio doctor? Yeah, like if it's someone, I mean, that that's can give you me gotta like, pay cash out of your pocket though. If someone can give me like a method, I'm fine with that. But I'm, I don't like, I'm not gonna. No one's gonna give me a Xanax so that I can sleep. Like I'm not taking that. Yeah, that's, I, I would rather not sleep than I have feel to do you. that. Like that's, I feel you, man. That's the thing. I don't know. It's. I'll figure it out. Eventually. Yeah, I feel you, bro. I try not to take any Anything. pills. Me either. At all. Like, I even... Even if I have a headache, I'll tough it out. <laughs> I mean, bro, I, I'll take an ibuprofen if I have if my head is, like... Really bad. Like, if I'm on the bathroom floor next to the exactly, toilet... And exactly. I'm, like, having a migraine that's insane... Exactly. Then I'll take something. That's how I am, too. But other than that, I try not to... You know, and... When I first had anxiety issues, that was the first thing was like, oh, let's get him on some Xanax. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I was like, even then, I'm very proud of myself for telling the doctor, no, mm-hmm. I'm not doing that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with anybody out there taking pills to help, you no, know, with I th- I th- obviously this. Th- Certain that things. are prescribed by a doctor yeah, to and help with your issues. But me, personally, I just... I don't like it. I don't like it. I, I want to be in full control of everything. And also, like, don't yeah. get me wrong, there's things where, like, bipolar, like, schizophrenia... Oh, for sure. Like, for sure. You might, need like to, that. you might need to take medication yeah. to help you live. It's like, important. My, but I personally, you know? and you personally, I know we're the same way. I believe... When you live with anxiety for long enough, you can certain like you can kind of learn how to deal with it. You'll never like get rid of it. That's not the yeah. thing. Like I'll always have anxiety. But you'll learn how to deal with it. But I know how it. to I know how to deal with it. Like if I feel panic coming on now, like I know what to do. Yeah. Rather than like be like, Oh, I'm having a heart attack, yeah. which is what no, I used to think crazy, bro. every time. Dude. 
I used to be so bad with the anxiety. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So bad. I would ha- I would try to do used bad. to be in the hospital. Yep. Me I'd too. Come home, tell my parents I'm having a heart attack, my heart's racing, we need to go. Mm-hmm. I remember being in the hospital <clears throat> yelling at the nurses to give me oxygen. Yeah. Because I couldn't breathe. And the nurse is like your oxygen's 99. Yeah. You don't it was even, always, you're, ha- you're so anxious. Calm down. It was always down. so annoying because they'd be like, oh, you just have anxiety. And I'd be like, I don't know, dog, because I'm pretty sure I'm dying right now. And yeah. You're, and like, you're just not doing this correctly. Yeah, man. So we, like, nah, we went, we both went through that shit, bro. It was awful. And I, I honestly don't really get a lot of anxiety. I, like, I still have like, I still have pretty bad social anxiety for sure. But I think like you've always you've kind of had to be around people like a yeah. lot, so like you're kind of like learning over yeah. time like how to just be used. To, you you were kind of forced into being used to it. You have yeah. to be. No, for sure. Like with what you're doing, you can't be around all of these people and like not speak. Like I'm yeah. I'm still very much like very to myself. So like I definitely still have social anxiety a lot, but. I'm we all got a I'm, little bit of social anxiety. I'm clutch man. when it comes to the moments I need to be like I, I'll still get in there and hit the shot if I need to talk to the right person. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, that's what it's all about, networking. Yeah, 100%. Talking to people, building relationships. Mhm. Uh Ronald, what are we at right now? 40. Yeah, so sounds good. pretty good. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I feel uh, pretty good about this episode. We got to into some like deeper stuff than usual. Uh, that was good. Let us know if you like stuff like that. It's kind of cool to talk about things like talk, that. Hopefully, talk about it helps real, people. Real life shit, man. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, that type of stuff helps people so that like you're just aware that we all go through the We're same. We're all shit. humans, you know. Life. Life isn't easy sometimes, and, you know, we all go through it. So we're all humans. Thank you guys for watching today's episode. This is the Everyone's Different Podcast. My name is Tristan Jass. I'm Trent, or Young Trench. And this is Electrolit. Drink it. See you next episode. Love you guys. Peace. Peace.